The bloodbath of World War II is over. Millions have lost their lives. Nazi Germany now rules the world. A group of prisoners are marched down the long boulevard that runs through the middle of the new capital of the Nazi Empire. Hitler is just a speck on the steps of the largest domed building ever constructed. To the right of the prisoners are massive concrete structures that loom like watchtowers over the causeway. To the left are almost identical structures that house leaders of the New World Order. It takes hours to walk down the main thoroughfare toward the man who will sentence them to death. These prisoners have found themselves in Germania, Hitler's newly built megacity and capital of the world. Thankfully, the Nazis did not win World War II and Hitler's dream city containing gigantic concrete buildings to celebrate his government and ideologies was never completed. Unfortunately for many during World War II, the city had been started and thousands lost their lives because of it. Germania was dreamt up by the mind of Hitler, so you know everything we're about to show you is gonna be crazy. Adolf Hitler started mapping and planning Germania as early as 1926. This is over a decade before World War II started. His obsession with creating a master race and controlling the world was nothing new when he launched his war to conquer Europe. Accounts suggest that Hitler always disliked Berlin as a city. He thought of it as dirty and disorganized. It was filled with too many left-wing progressives, people who wanted equality and peace, and there was no room for these ideologies in Hitler's future. He promised to fix the city once he had secured power in Germany. Hitler may have dreamt up the idea of Germania, but the head architect for the project was Albert Speer. Speer might have been deranged as Hitler. They became good friends and spent a lot of time planning and designing Germania together. Apparently, Hitler got along well with people who were as crazy as he was. For many years, their plans were kept secret. This may have been because many members of the Nazi party thought that Germania was not feasible and made their leader look slightly obsessed. Hitler described his world capital to be comparable to the cities of ancient Egypt, Babylon, and Rome. He had big dreams for Germania and he would do anything to make them a reality. The first step was the demolition of Berlin. Hitler needed to tear down tens of thousands of houses and buildings so he could build his dream capital. It did not seem to bother him that a war was going on. Luckily for Hitler, he had some help with the demolition of Berlin. Allied airstrikes were destroying large parts of the city. Speer liked to point out that the Allies were helping greatly with the planning efforts of Germania. Again, Speer was a little crazy. All too happy to help, the Allies continued bombing Berlin into rubble. In order to make Germania a reality, Hitler and Speer needed to change the actual landscape of Berlin. Germania was planned to have massive buildings all on the same level of land. Unfortunately, Berlin is not located on a flat plain and therefore, the topography of the landscape needed to be changed. Where the largest arc of Germania was supposed to be built, the land needed to be raised by 14 meters. To put that into perspective, the Nazis needed to raise the ground by a height of two giraffes standing on top of each other. That's a lot of land to create. Reshaping the earth was not the only insane feat of engineering that Germania would undertake. The city itself needed to be centered around a grand thoroughfare that would be called the North-South Avenue. It would be around 4.3 miles long and lined by massive theaters, shops, and government buildings. In the middle of the North-South Avenue would be a massive arch. It would be named the Triumphal Arch and would tower over the Arc du Triomphe in Paris. In fact, the Triumphal Arch was planned to be so large that its French predecessor would be able to fit underneath it. Everything needed to be grandiose so that military marches and parades with thousands of soldiers and tanks could traverse the city. The main causeway was not to be used by pedestrians, and so plans to create underground walkways and roads were drafted. Hitler could not have the common folk crowding up his massive avenue. Above ground, the streets would be lined with statues and monuments to celebrate the Nazi party. Below ground would be a series of barren tunnels. People would only use the tunnels to get from one spot above ground to another spot above ground without creating visible congestion. Basically, Hitler wanted to turn the attractive living spaces of Berlin into monuments of order. Attractiveness would always come second to efficiency in Germania. If that sounds crazy, you've seen nothing yet. When architects and urban planners look back at the plans for Germania, one thing is clear. Hitler's world capital would have been a nightmare for people to live in. Getting anywhere would be a difficult route of above or below ground roads. Also, keeping with character, Speer did not believe in traffic lights or trams, so the roadway would be in complete chaos. It's unclear what the procedure would have been if an underground accident happened. Knowing Hitler and Speer, the solution would probably be to collapse the tunnel with the accident and victims inside and just build a new one. But with the rabble trapped underground, Hitler could build the most beautiful structure of Germania. 
The crowning jewel of Hitler's Germania would be the Great Hall. The massive dome structure was inspired by the Pantheon in Rome. Its dome would be 16 times higher than St. Peter's Basilica, which was the world's tallest dome at the time. The plan was to make the dome of the Great Hall 950 feet high. The hall itself would be able to accommodate over 150,000 people, presumably all of which would come to hear Hitler speak. The grandiose nature of Germania and the Great Hall makes you wonder if Hitler was compensating for something. Adolf Hitler had a dream to make Germania the new capital of the world. Albert Speer helped design the city, but how was it to be built? Who was going to build it? This is where things get very dark, although it should come as no surprise when talking about one of the most evil men in history. Hitler, being the megalomaniac he was, had very little regard for human life that was not Aryan. Even with World War II raging on all fronts, he began destroying parts of Berlin to begin construction on Germania. To do this, Hitler killed thousands of innocent civilians. Even with a war going on all around him that killed millions, Hitler was busy at home killing his own people. Sometimes you have to wonder if there was any humanity left in Hitler. What comes next might suggest the answer is no. The Nazi regime began systematically kicking Berlin citizens out of their home to start construction on Germania. This began in 1939 as World War II started. German citizens who were removed from their homes were often given the houses that once belonged to Jewish families. Jewish people had been moved earlier to more cramped accommodations and run down parts of the cities. These later became known as ghettos and then evolved into concentration camps. This brings up an important point. Hitler's dream of having Germania be his world capital played a key role in enabling the Nazi party to carry out the Holocaust. In preparations for the construction of Germania, the Nazis had systematically gathered up the Jewish families and moved them into areas where they could be easily controlled and eventually killed. Germania was to be built using the blood and lives of the Jewish people. Albert Speer would use the SS to ensure the Nazis had enough slave laborers to begin construction of Germania. Speer pushed for more and more Jewish people to be rounded up and sent to labor camps so that materials could be produced faster and he could begin construction on the megacity. His plan to secure as many Jewish people as possible for slave labor was so ambitious that even his own father told him he was crazy. His father was right, but nobody had seen real crazy yet. The path that would lead to building the city of Germania was the path that led to the beginnings of the Holocaust. Obviously, for this atrocious part of human history, Hitler is to blame, but Speer and the building of Germania played a crucial role as well. If Germania had ever been finished, it would have been a monumental testament to the genocide of millions of Jewish people. In order to gather the materials necessary to build Germania, enormous granite and marble quarries were created. The structures in Germania were to be made of concrete, but adorned and embellished by granite and marble. This would give buildings the look of ancient Rome. When examining the locations of quarries around Berlin and comparing them to the locations of concentration camps, they line up almost perfectly. You can probably guess who was being used to mine and shape the marble and granite for Germania. The Nazis used the Jews in the concentration camps to produce the materials that would build Hitler's city of dreams. Though the Jewish people were affected the most by the building of Germania, no one was safe from Hitler and Speer's mega city. The need for labor to construct their monstrosity of a city was so great that the Nazis began rounding up any male beggar, tramp, or gypsy that was fit to work. Once the war started, Hitler had another influx of slave laborers for building Germania. Prisoners of war were shipped into Berlin to work in the quarries and construction sites. At its height, the POW workforce in Berlin was as high as 130,000 people. Although this number fluctuated since death from being overworked and accidents were common during the construction of Germania. Was Hitler's dream of building Germania possible though? In a word, yes. Architects and engineers that look back at the plans and designs for Germania agree that all the buildings were technically feasible. The engineers and building experts of the Nazi party had the technical know-how to build the massive structures that Hitler wanted, so Germany also had the resources and labor needed to demolish and rebuild Berlin into Germania. So why didn't the project get completed or at least further along? Some of the reasons you may be able to guess, others might surprise you. In a somewhat ironic way, the war that fueled Hitler's desire to build Germania ultimately got in the way of that dream becoming a reality. The close relationship between Hitler and Speer led to the Fuhrer appointing his close friend as the Minister of Armaments and War Production. This meant that Speer's attention was shifted away from constructing Germania and to more pressing matters that would support the war effort. The plan was that after Germany secured victory, the building of Germania would resume. 
Thankfully, this did not happen. There was no doubt in Hitler's mind that he would win the war. He expected that once he controlled vast quantities of lands and people, there would be an endless supply of materials and labor to construct Germania to all his specifications. This thought process was made evident by the lack of discussion around the monetary cost of building Germania. It was just assumed that the newly conquered territories would provide all the materials and slave labor free of charge. Once everyone was incorporated into the Nazi empire, Hitler and Speer could do whatever they wanted with them. It never occurred to the duo that they would have to pay for labor or materials. It was all supposed to come from winning the war. Would Germania have been an impressive architectural site? Sure, if you could get past the death of millions and homicidal ideologies of the Nazi party, but the world is grateful that it never came to that. Germania was a megacity dreamt up by an insane dictator, and although it was never completed, tens of thousands of lives were lost solely because its construction started. If you want to learn more about things that might have happened if Germany won World War II, check out our video What If Hitler Had Won? Or if you want to go the other direction, watch What If Hitler Never Existed? 